Chair, followed by the declaration. <laughs> you know what I mean. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item is the approval of the agenda. Mayor, I have one addition to the agenda that we need to uh, make make official. Um, item seven and add a, a, an item 7E, and that's going to be approval of a memorandum of understanding between the Town of Farragut and the Farragut Business Alliance. It was inadvertently not posted last Friday, but we were able to get that uh, posted on Monday, so we wanted to uh, go ahead and add that to your agenda for this evening. I'll move. We're not going to take it up. No, we're, we're we are. If, if the board's yeah. willing to, to take that item up, yes. I couldn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. I'll move for approval of the uh, agenda with the addition. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Next item is mayor's report. I can report that I had a very nice vacation, <laughs> <laughs> very much needed. Uh, but we're back, and um, I do have to have a, uh, have your attention for a minute. Uh, we have uh, four planning commissioners who uh, whose terms are up, but they can be renewed, and those are. Betty Dick, Drew Carson, Noah Miles, Myers, and uh, was that all? Yes, sir, because the board um, appointed the Board of Mayor Alderman representative at the June meeting. So there's just there's a total of four to be renewed, but one has already been renewed by this board. So just the three okay. for your appointment. Okay. I thought it was four. And I, I'm reappointing all of them, so uh, you'll, you'll be seeing them. Um, That's all I have under mayor's report, unless somebody else wants to uh, provide anything. If not, uh, we go to Citizens Forum. I have one speaker tonight. It's Robin Hill at 11504 Mountain View Road. I think you know me. You heard my name read there a while ago. And I would have said this at the workshop, but I'm going to say it briefly right now. Uh, I think that, that this discussion and Ms. Palman's uh, written comments indicate a great need to study the road situation in Farragut in a lot more depth than just for one road in one place. Uh, and I would recommend that the board mayor and alderman ask Mr. Shipley to arrange a charrette on traffic and roads to start with traffic engineering 101 and make it about three hours, talk about the things that there are a number of things that, that come to my attention. Uh, we've already looked at, at how to get across Kingston Pike uh, about in 19, two, I guess in 2007. Uh, when you start talking about tunnels, you, in a walking trail, you, you have to, just for starters, you have to meet ADA. That takes a lot of room. We found that out when we did the study. But everything that Ms. Palvin said about the way traffic is in Farragut is correct. Uh, one thing she didn't say is we have a we need to do remedial reading because nobody seems to be able to read the black and white signs. And I would suggest that we 
start with traffic improvement by having a, a real campaign for traffic law enforcement. Start now. But anyway, I'll leave that with you. I'd re I really think it'd be time well spent to have the community come together three hours in a moderated charrette uh, atmosphere and deal with our overall road situation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I would uh, agree with him. I think we are long overdue for a public conversation, a community conversation, and I think we should probably think about doing one in the fall. Um, this is something we really need to start looking at and addressing. So. All right. Moving on uh, to the approval of the minutes from June 22nd. Move to approve. Second. All favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Um, the ordinances. The first reading. Ordinance 17-10, ordinance to rezone parcels 79, 80, 81, 97, 96, 9601, text map 1, and portions of parcels 78, 95, and 9501, tax map, is that 151? Uh, located along Kingston Pike and South Watt Road, 18.65 acres from R. Uh, R. One. One. One and C1 to PCD uh, GBS engineering applicant. This particular item uh, was discussed at two uh, planning commission meetings and it's related to some uh, text amendments that you all recently passed in involving the planned commercial development district, namely to add residential as a permitted use and make some other updates based on some updates we've made recently to our zoning ordinance. Um, and mainly so that uh, the applicant uh, before you is interested uh, in uh, developing a big box grocery store uh, that would have two smaller um, commercial buildings. Um, let's see here. Pull. This is the site plan. The north is actually at the bottom of the, the drawing there. Uh, but it would have two... Uh, uh, retail buildings uh, against Kingston Pike uh, and uh, some multifamily buildings on the southern portion of the development. Um, as part of a rezoning to this particular zoning district, you actually have to have um, the uh, several additional things in, that, that you would normally not have to have in a typical rezoning. And one of those is a concept master plan, another is a survey of the entire area involved in the planned commercial development. And then the third is a written narrative uh, describing various uh, aspects of, of your proposal. Uh, during the rezoning discussion, mainly we focused on the concept master plan that's before you there. Uh, there have been several versions of this, as Mark can attest to. Um, the, uh, the purpose of the concept master plan is really uh, we all understand it's conceptual, uh, and you know, things can certainly change as you get into more detailed information. You may find some things that you didn't discover uh, at this level of uh, analysis. Uh, but the concept master plan is basically um, a general expression of how your proposed project is proposed to meet um, the objectives of the Planned Commercial Development District. Uh, and thus be a good candidate for rezoning to that particular district. The only development in town that's currently planned commercial development is the Kroger Marketplace uh, Development Brooklawn. Uh, so that's, that's the only one we have, um, and it didn't have residential as a, a possibility at that time, and now that is an option in this particular district. Some of the objectives in the planned commercial development district are 
providing for open space um, and thoughtful open space, open space that is functional, uh, that it's connected, um, you know, it provides for desirable focal points that are likely to be actively used. Um, the development also need to provide for a sense of place, some kind of um, innovative elements that you couldn't otherwise achieve under conventional zoning. Uh, it needs to provide for efficient and innovative land use practices and how you lay out the, the buildings, parking lot, the stormwater, um, you know, all those com the various components of site design. Uh, and then also just making sure that it's compatible and consistent with your adopted plans and ordinances, namely the comprehensive plan, your bicycle and pedestrian plan, design standards, those kind of things. The PCD has uh, a lot of benefits for an applicant. It, they get more flexibility uh, in terms of uses, um, setbacks uh, for buildings, parking lot allocation, parking space allocations, uh, landscaping, signage, lots of flexibility that you wouldn't have in a traditional commercial development. But in exchange, what your product needs to demonstrate is that you're providing something innovative and unique for the community uh, in exchange for that flexibility. Uh, the staff uh, is supportive of a gen the general idea of a rezoning to the PCD in this portion of town. This is, as you all know, an entranceway uh, from the west, uh, western part of the town, uh, where a, an innovative development could certainly showcase um, the town as a progressive and innovative community as you're, as you're entering it from, from the west. Uh, the staff uh, has did express uh, some concerns, though, with certain aspects of the concept master plan at the, the planning commission meeting and whether um, some of the aspects of the plan really meet the objectives of the plan commercial development. Um, the open space is one of the, the concerns um, just it is somewhat fragmented. There's some open space that's proposed along a major arterial road and on Watt Road. Um, then there's some open space that's on the south portion of the development that's in a pretty steep sloped uh, tree covered area. And the staff kind of questions as whether that's could be integrated into the community and functional. In fact, probably to do this, this development that's before you, they're gonna be looking at potentially 15 to 20 foot tall retaining walls on the south part of the development. And that would effectively isolate the project from that open space that they're showing on the south end. Uh, another concern uh, that's related to that is just the improvements that are proposed um, on that southern portion of uh, the development. Um, it is uh, a heavily wooded, steep sloped area, uh, and it's in fact shown as, part of it's shown as open space on the future land use map, <clears throat> part of where they're putting buildings. So the staff kind of questions whether that is consistent with the land use plan and with the protection of, of natural resources, which is an objective uh, of the plant commercial uh, district. Uh, so there's also a question just on the concept plan as to whether this in fact is really an innovative uh, design. I think in looking at this from space, it looks like you could actually just rezone the property to R6 in the south and rezone it to C1 in the north and do the same development under conventional zoning. I don't see a lot that's really innovative uh, or unique with this particular concept. So uh, those are some of the concerns that the staff uh, expressed about the concept plan. Um, it, uh, again, we do support the idea of this zoning district in this portion of town. I think it would be good for the community uh, to have 
an innovative project there. Uh, we think there needs to be some adjustments made to the concept uh, master plan. And I'll be happy to I've got a question answer for you then. Questions. Um, yeah. The master plan has not, the concept master plan has not been approved. I mean, they're going to have to rework it from what you're telling well, us. Well, it was approved. It was presented to the Planning Commission as part of uh, Ordinance 1710, and they did approve the entire, the, the concept master plan, the narrative, uh, and the, the survey as all part of that ordinance. So, yes, it was recommended for approval. Like I say, there are certain things about this plan that I think are good, like moving the buildings up close to Kingston Pike. Um, it's, but it, it just needs, from my perspective as a planner, it needs more massaging from a land planner. <laughs> I guess I mean, I'm confused. Just, if it's approved, it's approved. If it's not approved, if you're saying you're still looking. Well, it was recommended by the Planning Commission for approval. It's required as part of uh, rezoning to this particular zoning district. Okay. So that's as far why as the they, rezoning. Okay. Yeah. All right. 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 Which would not be the case if it was six or uh, or C one or C one or C one. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Alderman Williams, I know you sat through most of these meetings. What What is your um, thoughts on this plan? Well. Uh, Mark's had his work cut out for him. Thank you. <laughs> this has been a, uh, a learning curve for, I think, everybody uh, about what this could be when you uh, throw in the uh, residential portion of it. Um, I think that uh, we're at a point now to where uh, I think we've pretty well to the point to where there might be a fine tune item or two, but uh, I think we're there. It's my opinion. Thank you. You you obviously have heard uh, Mark's uh, remarks. Yeah, Mark's remarks. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good book. Well, well when I say my name, <laughs> it'll even get funnier, won't it? <laughs> uh, how do you react to those? Do you, you want to take them one by one? or Well, let's, let's first start with my name's Mark Bilek. I represent and own GBS Engineering and have been working on this. And I'd like to clarify to Mark, actually it's been three Planning Commission meetings. Three? Yes, but, not two. Oh, for the rezoning? For the rezoning, yes. Oh, okay. Staff development. Plus staff, two staff development yeah. meetings. And lots of input. And like Mark said, there's been... I can think of right now off the top of my head at least six revisions to this plan. And we have hired a land planner who's a nationally known land planner out of Houston to assist us and got us to this point and help clarify things. In regards to the open space, we're only required to provide 10%. The open space along the south and the west boundary is extra. The open space along South Watt Road and next to between the grocery store and the first apartment building meets the 10% open space requirement as set forth in, in the PCD requirements. Now, in regards to fine tuning, once we go to design on this and we start really doing a grading plan, which is the big thing that's going to end up ha defining a lot of what happens on this property. Yeah, there may be some things that shift, pull, maybe get pulled out. Yeah. Um, but that's during design. This is a concept of what we would like to propose for this property as a use. This was it, what we feel is the best use that makes the numbers work so the developer can do a development. And that's what we'd like to get, you know, approved at this first reading. So, yes, I'm not saying that this is the final. No, because we have not started design yet. Once we go to design, we have to, once we go to design, we have to get a site development permit, which will have to go back in front of Planning Commission, mm -hmm. and it will get a whole other round of comments, and it won't be one meeting. I can tell you that right much right now. I know it's not going to be one meeting. So, yeah. You all, they will see it again before we can even start breaking, breaking ground and moving dirt. So, 
this is our best estimate of what we would like to build. Louise, I'd like to hear your comments. Well, obviously, I, I approved this. This is, um, I understand uh, Mark's, uh, Mr. Shipley's issues, but they're dealing with a topography issue. Let me go back to one thing. The front section of this is zoned commercial. And they can just develop this with a grocery store and uh, the, the shops. retail without, shops without and be anything. done with it. Okay. My concern is in 15 or 20 years yeah. when that grocery store is kind of on the um, degrade and, and they were looking around for a new place, food, whoever's coming in, they could abandon that grocery store and go to another one and we were putting the future residents in the same situation that we are currently in with Ingalls and Kroger's. So I'm very sensitive to the fact that, that when we bring big boxes in, we really need to be very conscientious about them coming in and, and what's going to happen in 15 to 20 years. With the apartment complex there, it keeps them there. They have a built-in um, Customer base. Customer, Customer base, base and probably employee base yes. right there. Yes, I agree um, with you. The, the struggle I had was we are living in suburbia, and they've got to develop this with suburbia in mind. People are driving by on Kingston Pike. I had suggested to them at one point maybe we could turn the retail shops to face each other and create like a mini market square which they immediately said, well, that, com that immediately makes it more difficult for them to even market for people to come in because they, they look for that street presence, which makes sense because we're in suburbia. We are not in a city where we can have a, a design like that. So I understood what they were saying and trying to balance that. My issue was with common space. We don't have something tied to the common space, but it is in a location where the people over here on Old Stage, what's that neighborhood with the, that's? Triple Crown, mm, across the road. Across the road on the corner. <clears throat> anyway, they, the they, they're close enough and, and they can utilize this open space and, and they're, they're endeavoring to make it nice. I just wish we had some commercial connected to it so that it was tied together. Let me make sure I understand something. Um, you're talking about the two small retail buildings. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. wanted, you were suggesting possibly facing them towards one another. Yeah, kind of like And home. putting a green space, some of this green space in between them. No, actually, I would love to see, you know how Market Square is downtown? Uh -huh. The two fa buildings face each other, and there's a big... With a common area in between. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It could That's be a green space. It well, could, could be. be but I, I'm thinking this green space up here next to the apartments. Um, Somehow, could that be incorporated between the two? Uh, These I mean, are the things we've worked through. I, we, I yeah. like that idea, yeah. which yeah. would make it a well, place where people no, could. Yeah. And that, the green space between the grocery store and that first apartment is going to be a, there's going to, what I'm envisioning, just rough, roughing things out, is the southern end of the green space is going to be a retaining wall but we're going to do it nice so it looks nice it's not going to be just this concrete wall sitting there that have graffiti and everything like that on it no 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 please no um but we'll create a green space there that the community can come and and use and the apartment people can use it for picnics for walking their dogs for doing whatever that's necessary in that area there's a place in atlanta that i, I take my my family my son and daughter-in-law and grandchildren too and it's got a nice green shop and it's got a little uh, taco stand and, and in between these businesses a little green space with a gazebo mm -hmm. and they buy their ice cream and they go sit outside or they well and that's know, what buy soda and sit outside and well, that's that, what i and i'm thinking that people from the apartment would come down here shop the retail and spend a little time and that's what that green space between the grocery store and the, so uh, that's, the th that's what we're envisioning that and also the the space along uh south watt road if you notice, there is a gazebo part as part of that development. Yeah, part of it's going to be a storm pond, but it's going to, as you know, storm ponds are ugly. I mean, I'll be the first one to admit they're ugly. But what we're proposing here is having a way that people, when there's not water sitting in it, which I hope won't be, I mean, we get enough rain, but when there's no water in it, you could walk down, it'll be mowed. You could take your dogs out there and play Frisbee and take advantage of that area. In it, but also have a flat area above, If even if there was water in it, there's still a flat area above it that you can take advantage of. Like you said, 
You go into the shops along Kingston Pike. If there's an ice cream shop, you get an ice cream. You could drive around, or if you pet, if bicycle down there to get that, you could bicycle over, sit in the gazebo. There'll be it'll be landscaped real nice. It won't be just this big grass area. There will be lots of trees and stuff because we got to plant a lot of trees to re, uh, not just in replacement. And Mark, would you pull up the tree preservation plan? I know you have it in there. Yeah. Or the tree sorry. Well, you went past yeah. it right there, back one. That one. No, the next one back. The one before that. Yeah. As you can see right there, that's the tree survey for the property. Yeah, it is tree covered, but the number of trees that are qualified for the tree preservation should be a heck of a lot more dense. I mean, when the Walgreens was put in over here at Campbell Station Road and North, North Cam uh, Grizzly Chapel Road, I did that plan. There's more trees than what's shown on this one, on that little two and a half, three acre that met the ordinance. So yeah, it's wooded, I'm not saying it's not, but the trees that meet the criteria for that big, that's about six to eight acres right there. There's not as many trees that meet the criteria. We are planning to do everything as required by the, by the landscaping plan and the tree preservation plans, ordinances of the town of Farragut. And if we can't fit them on our site, we know that we will have to pay the town so that they put money in their accounts so that they can plant the trees where the town needs them. On Everett Road. If it needs to be on Everett Road, we'll put them on Everett Road. Wherever you, you tell us where you want them, we'll put them. How's that? But we are not, we know the requirements. I, this, I've been working on with the town of Farragut since I moved here, since 1987. I know all the requirements. We're not trying to ask for any variances. Um, we're not asking for any favors. We just would like to do this development to meet the ordinances and meet all the criteria that we have, you know, that is required by the town of Farragut. I, I guess my, from my example, to have the little green space near the retail, people go in and out and well, they buy something they want to go back in. Well, the, if they the have to go across the parking lot and go. Well, actually, there is a green space between the two parking lots. Where is that now? Behind, if you go south of the two buildings um, along Kingston Pike, going towards the parking lot, there's, an air, there's a gap there. That is a green space area right there, too. I'm not sure. I we don't have it claimed out as an open space area, but there is a green space area right there. Oh, here? Well, and they have a space in between the two buildings that is. Um, yes, and, the, and there's a space between usable. the two buildings that could be. We, we, so that, yeah, yeah. We're, okay. we're, we're looking to try and do something in there that would have a port. Um, I don't I always I get that. I just think it would help the retail. Business. No, I agree. We agree with you, and we want to do something that would encourage people to use the, right. the retail there and even. Not just the people that live in the apartment complex, but the people across the street, across Kingston Pike, over off of Union Road, on that whole area out there, so that they come and use the facilities and take advantage of this development. I I, I had a question. We have that walking, the proposed walking trail across to, that. Up to, uh, that is a requirement of the agreement for the land transfer between the two parties. Okay. They Does it have to be a trail? No. It just it, got to be a pedestrian, pedestrian access between the property to the south and our development. That is part of an agreement we have to honor. I understand that, and I'm fine with that. It's yes. just um, I know that it's steep in there. Oh yeah. Uh, does it have to be ADA compliant? No, it does not. Okay. Um, had you guys considered uh, doing steps? Yes. And oh, there will be steps. Okay. There will be steps, but it'll be like. A group of four steps, then a nice flat area, and then a group of four steps, and a flat area. Okay. Something like well, that. Well, I, I meant just straight down. For the person that doesn't want to take the long way. We will look at that. I okay. won't say that we are have, we have not considered it, but if that would be this y'all's desire, and we can oh. do it, we will do it. Roll off. Because I know it's what twelve to fifteen feet. That's pretty high. Yeah. Well, well the problem with the, the problem with that is by code you can only go a rise of eleven feet okay. before you have to have a landing. Uh huh. It has to be a minimum of five feet, just like ADA. I understand. Then you can go another eleven feet okay. before you have another landing. So, and then if you're looking at one foot steps, that's to go eleven feet. That's twenty two feet. Then five foot. That's twenty seven feet. And then you know, see where I'm going. You're it, talking. It, yeah. it may not be enough room to do it in one set there but okay that's why we i it, notice i have it going a long ways up there is also could, 
Well, I'm just thinking of for the person that doesn't want to take the, I mean, you could have both or, or for the we, person yeah. that says, I don't really, I just want to go down there. I don't want to have to walk this have way you, to get that way. So if you look to whether you need that one apartment building by the open space and that would allow you to bring the whole development which, down, which, 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 apart, north, which building, the one near the open space, that's kind of there by itself, then you could bring all the the development down, you would lower your development cost because you wouldn't have as tall a retaining wall, maybe not even retaining no, wall. Still have, we're going to have a retaining wall regardless. But if it gets you out of that, that open space land use area and well, off part of those steep slopes, I just question whether you need that building for the development because you've already the, got. The numbers, for the numbers that we need for the, for the performer to work, they need a, a minimum of 216 units, and that's what we're showing right now. <laughs> How many was that, Mark? I'm sorry. 216. 216. The open space that you have uh, located off of Watt Road, yep. it's hard to tell on this diagram. Is that all detention area no. or just part of it? No, just a portion of it will be detention. Okay. Proposed detention. To be honest, I haven't done the detention calculations, but once we get to that point, if it looks like it's going to expand to take the whole area, obviously we'll be coming back and talking to you all about that because you can't, I mean, the open space can be detention by your co ordinances, but I don't want it to be. I want there to be some flat area up there so that it's like a, maybe a 60-40 split at the max. But we're also looking at trying to find other ways to do the low impact development so we slow down the time of concentration so that our storm pond does not have to be that big. One other thing just that I was kind of concerned about and I know and Mark does have a challenge with trying to meet his clients what they're trying to get on this property but that's not necessarily our concern I mean we're just looking at whether this property that's the right zoning district and the right plan for this property not what necessarily the applicants wanting we got to look at what what is best for the the community and they've got a huge amount of asphalt kind of in the center of the development that to me, it needs to be broken up somehow a little more than it is. They've got a fuel center there, which I understand that. That's part of the entity that's got the big box. And we've already decreased the parking by over, we're down, to meet, if it was an R6 C1, you'd have a bigger asphalt field. Yeah, I understand. Extremely, it about needs twice to be the size. Broken up somehow because it looks to me just from aerial view like you just got a huge expanse of asphalt with lots of green islands in it and lots of uh, crosswalks that cross between across it per y'all's requirements per what you've asked for. We've, well, we've, again, this is a plan development. This needs to be something that you could distinguish visually from a regular C1 or R6 development. That's the question. That's my concern, and I'm not trying to pick on Mark. He's got a, this is a tough, uh, and I, I commend him for the challenge that his clients given. And yet we got property. approved by <laughs> Planning Commission on a unanimous vote last time we were there. That's true, but I'm just pointing these things out because that's something we all need to think about as to whether does this concept plan provide the community the value that we were looking for uh, well, to warrant the rezoning. Okay, my question is this. Let's say this doesn't happen. You can't make it work. Somebody comes along and wants to build a commercial on the north side of this area only. Yep. What's that going to do to the PCD if we approve this? What's this going to do to that if someone then comes along and says, well, I don't want to uh, build apartments back here. I just want to build homes back there. Well, there's a How's that there's an amendment this? process in the PCD district that talks about minor versus major amendments. So that would have to go back through the process. That would be a major amendment. So we, but we could go back. Plan. Yes. That's right. Yes. If it, if I agree with what Mark's saying, if yep. say this developer gets whatever cold feet, I don't think so because I know he's closing on property on, in the middle of August on all of this. He's planning on going forward. But if he gets cold feet and he flips the deal to somebody else who comes behind and they want to say they can't work the deal out with the grocery store and they have to change that to something else and and therefore you don't have no fuel center and or they maybe want to put more residential on it and get rid of the big box off of it. Well, that's a major amendment. You're going you're, you're going back to square one. You're starting all over again and you go in front of planning commission. You have to do all that and you have to be approved by all of it. Y'all, y'all ordinance does give you a lot of protection on that standpoint because 
like you said, for, to get this zoning, you have to provide an approved concept plan, a survey, in which we provided also a tree survey, a layout, a boundary survey of the property, and a narrative of what you really, what we're proposing and why we're proposing it. Which, the, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, but wasn't the narrative about three pages long? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I didn't Kroger's write it, so was, I, yeah. I'm just. I'm, I'm yeah, sorry. it was. It was a few pages. Yeah, yeah it's a few and pages. And it was included so in the ordinance. It's not like. Yeah. Let's put this, if, we, if this was agriculture and we're coming in front of you for a C1 zoning, we didn't have to do a land concept plan. we just give you a, a boundary survey and say, we're going to do C1. Would you prove it? It's, it's zoned then. I don't know why not. Well, I'm, you know, I'm saying the rest of the property, all C1. Oh, all C1. Yeah, all the C1. So that's what I'm saying. You wouldn't even have a concept plan in front of you. You just have a property map. And then not even a narrative of what he's wanting to do. You just say, here's, here's, what, here's the property. I want to zone it to C1. I want to build commercial on it. That's all your ordinance requires you to turn in, plus pay the fee on the right colored forms. <laughs> so this is rezoned. He could just turn around and say, you know what, I'm bagging the apartments. I'm going to do C1. Well, actually, we could, we, could do, we could do homes on the, R, on the R1 property. Yeah. Mark, do you know how many um, square feet of commercial you could fit on here right now if it was just zone commercial? Just zone commercial, um, and you did underground detention, probably close to 100,000 square feet. And you have proposed, I think, so 60? Right about 50, about 55 to 60. With the two retail shops the and the shops grocery store? Not, the, the, the shops are 9,000 piece in the grocery store it's about 58 58,000 it's so about 40,000 more 30 to 40,000 more square feet so what I think what, it, what it's looking like is that the applicant is reducing the amount of commercial area that they may be able to build into but they're also getting 216 apartments to be able to add to the center yes, as well and, and we're having a lot more oversight by Planning Commission and the Mayor Board and Alderman that's what we're asking for. We're asking for more oversight. Now, how many developers really ask for more oversight? <laughs> well, that's a, it's a good point. And I think uh, certainly with this PCD district, as Mark, has, uh, Mark uh, Shipley has mentioned, that uh, we definitely want to make sure that when you go to rezone something in that PCD, that the community is getting something back in return. It's not just one-sided overall. And I think that's the biggest challenge that you want to try to make sure you balance in, in this whole process. You have something to say, sir? Yeah, I, uh, I just wanted to, I'm a, I wanted to address the board. There's something that's bothering me here. Can you state your name and address oh. for the record? John Nels, 221 Smith Road. What's bothering me here is the procedure. There's a, uh, an ordinance that's been requested. You all are turning this into a planning meeting, and that's not what, I mean, he has a unanimous good point. planning board. I don't even know why the town administrator is talking. I, I don't think that's appropriate here, uh, interjecting and asking questions in the board of mayor and alderman meeting. So uh, I asked the mayor to take charge of the meeting, please. Thank you. Well, uh, on that note, <laughs> this is uh, well as a town reading. attorney this is a public meeting and a lot of people are allowed to speak so I think there's nothing wrong with the town administrator asking questions not one thing and and it, including the board including the board yeah. I think the other, if I can speak mayor would that be okay <laughs> what? would that be okay with you if I spoke for just one more time you don't need to ask. The, the reason that we're talking about the concept plan tonight is because this specific zoning district connects a concept plan to it. Most of the time when we rezone, we don't have concept plans. This one actually requires a concept plan. That's why there's so much discussion because once they get approval of their concept plan, when they go back to planning commission for site plan approval, it's pretty much if it meets the concept plan, the, the planning commission pretty much has to say, okay, there can be a few tweaks and things here, but they are pretty much getting approval with this rezoning to get uh, to get the concept plan and then future site plans approved based off of that. That's why we're having so much discussion about it. Yeah, the approval of the concept plan is the rezoning. That's 
So that's why the discussion. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm not. I'm not. All I'm saying is. All I'm saying is that. Uh, I can, I view the board of mayor wrong. I'm just a citizen, and I just view this as a policy thing. And and I mean, yeah, anybody can speak, but the the way that this is being done, I think, is. Uh, uh, really not in keeping with the way the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting function. One of the things we look at, not to interrupt you, but one of the things we look at is is if we have to repurpose this land later on, uh, what uh, Alderman Pablon was talking about is if the big box decides to move out and we've got an empty building there, we're looking at other ways to, to do things. And by, yep. by doing the discussion that we're having right here, uh, I think you're going to see that happen quite often whenever you have this, if this ever happens again, because yeah. it, you have to get through some of these processes to make sure that if in the future you do, do some, have to do something different, you'll have a, a path to do it. Yes. And the other thing, and if I may speak for a second, the other thing that y'all have instituted, which I think is actually personally think is a good thing, is the architectural design guidelines. This big box is not going to be a standard big box because your guidelines won't allow it to be one. It will be a high-end development the the shops along Kingston Pike will be brick there will be it'll have to meet all the guidelines as in your ordinance and trust me I'm, I'm, the audience doesn't know this but some of y'all have seen emails from me my email has my name PE and then underneath it in parentheses is the 18 states that I'm licensed in I do work all over the United States so when I say that you all have a lot of governance on what's going to happen on this property, I mean it because I see it. I mean, if this same thing was going on, and I'm not picking on Crossville, but Crossville has no zoning ordinance. <laughs> I just did a medical office building in, in that's under construction right now in down, it's basically almost downtown Crossville. And it was like, when do you want to start? They don't care what it looks like. They just want they want a development. They didn't care. Their ordinance, they don't have a zoning ordinance. They literally do not. There's no zoning in the city of Crossville, Tennessee. Who care? I know you do. No, no, I, I'm just saying, just as not too far away is an example of another municipality in the state of Tennessee. And I could go on and tell you one, a project that I worked on in Florida where Home Depot, or not Home Depot, Lowe's was building Lowe's and the part of their review is you have to turn in an architectural rendering of what the building will look like post-constructed. Well, I don't know what the architect that did it was thinking because he put the coping on the top of the architectural rendering is in Home Depot orange. <laughs> Guess what? They had to paint the, or, the, the coping on the top of the facade orange in order to get their CO. So, I mean, I've seen the whole gamut of requirements for doing projects, and I know what the rules are here. I've been, like I said, I've been, li I've moved here in 1987. I've been working with the town of Farragut since 1987. This doesn't. This is just the way y'all do business, and I appreciate it. And it's not a problem. We're w we're willing to work with you on that to get this to be a great amenity to the town. Mark Shipley, I, I have one question for you. Mm -hmm. Does this meet the requirements of the PCD? Well, and as I put in the write-up, I think that's certainly debatable at best. I think they do encroach into – one of the objectives of the PCD is to protect the, the natural resources of the larger project. And I think some of the encroachment into the steeper slopes, uh, in the wood, heavily wooded area on the south part uh, would not, in my professional opinion, be compatible with – that objective of the PCD. Um, the open space, again, I think is, uh, in, my, in my personal opinion, I don't think it, it's quite there yet. Um, I think it needs some, some tweaking. There's too much uh, unbroken asphalt sections and perhaps even too much massing of apartment buildings without maybe a, a, a central gathering space for all of them to, to face onto, I think would be an improvement. And we don't um, have 40 acres to do it either. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, and we also have 65 or 70 foot of relief across the back part of the property. 
And that's my point about the, the natural condition of the property. You got 70 feet of topographic relief from north to south. Um, what that tells me when I have an objective in this district that talks about, uh, you know, protecting the natural resources is that we inventory those resources early on and make sure that whatever we're proposing as our concept takes that into consideration. Uh, so I think a south part of this particular plan uh, is not consistent with that. I've got a question. Uh, if, we do, if we pass on this today, we don't approve it. What's, what are the consequences? What are we faced with? Yeah, or what is he faced with? I don't know. I, don't I can tell you what the developer's going to do. I can tell you right now. He's going to build a grocery store in the shops and say, the hell with everything. Goodbye. Give us a big old parking lot. Yep. Which would be a C1 parking lot? Yep. With probably underground detention, so you'll even have more asphalt. All, th all I think it, I'm asking it, from a staff perspective is just, and I think it's kind of, I always think these things are the same thing the developer should want because if he's doing something that's innovative and truly unique and people differentiate it from other developments, then I think he's added a lot of value to his brand uh, as well as the town. So. What I'm trying to do here is not be, I'm not trying to pick this thing apart. I'm just trying to make sure that the concept master plan, you know, provides the best investment for the developer and the community. Uh, that's all I'm trying, and making sure that, in my opinion, it meets the objectives of the plan commercial district. And apparently the planning commission approved it unanimously. Um, yes. Here is uh, the the flip side of that is we can push so hard that we end up with um, what we've just said. Um, where it, where is that fine line of? Um, to me, these are uh, appropriately located uh, for apartments because people will go to Watt Road to um, get on the highway. It's a um, a good location for apartments. Uh, we've already indicated that we need apartments. Um, and this would, I, this, this has not been a controversial issue. Um, I don't, we haven't heard from one person against. No, I hadn't had one complaint. I haven't either. Um, so it, it's, it, it seems like it, if you don't hear from the community, to me that means that they're not, they've, they've, it's been in the paper. Is it perfect? No. Do I wish that we had more engagement with our open space? Yes. We have topogra topography issues. We're trying to do a lot with a little bit. Um, who controls the, who manages and um, maintains the open space? Who would do that? I believe that's on uh, the, pro either, it, on this it'll probably be the developer because he will be, the, he will be managing the apartments, he'll okay. be leasing the grocery store land to the grocery store and okay. he'll be leasing the things. So I think it'll be the developer. Okay. Narrative to okay. and Mark's right. It's kind of like uh, Parkside Drive, where yep. they have a, a, a property owners association. association. But the, in, in, in the starting with, I think it'll be the the developer. And that, it, to me, is almost key because that's who whoever's maintaining that. And if their decision is, oh, we're going to do some community events here, then all of a sudden you have a, a community draw. But it's it really and that's what they they've already expressed interest to do stuff like that. Yes, certainly they're going to if, if they're building apartments. I have at some point you have to hope that that's but we don't have any control. Over it. So at the end of the day, um, that's kind of the my concern is if if the engagement of those um, uh, open spaces is really going to be dictated by the, the developer, or the yep. property um, maintenance yep. person. Yep. Regardless of how that's, I guess, how it's positioned, but I still wish we had a little bit of commercial in front of it. But well, if we had commercial where the open space is along South Watt Road, I have don't have enough open space, and then that South. So we're we're actually it's during the process of we've actually taken out twenty one thousand square reason. feet of groceries or of, of commercial space and lowered the the initial apartment count from I believe it was like two. 240 down to 216. The parking ratios, I mean, if this was C1, the grocery store would have to be a 5 parking ratio. We're barely a four. 
with what we're allocating for the grocery store. The apartments would have to be a 1.75 ratio. We're close. It's about 1.6. The shops up front, now those do have a little extra parking right there, but shops will have a higher turnover, and, and if we have a restaurant in any one of them, that blows the parking ratio. As you all know, you get a restaurant, you need 10 per, per square feet, per 100 square feet, or per 1,000 square feet. So you need the parking for, for that area there because then you're gonna, that's where you're going to have a lot of turnover and a lot of – you want to have – that's what makes it desirable for someone to lease the space. So we have – we're under-parked. We have cut square footage out from the initial plan of both commercial and apartment units and squeezed and pulled and tugged every which way we can to get as much green space and to stay. Like Mark says, we don't really want to go up that slope. I don't want to go up that slope because the higher you go, the higher it is. But to get the numbers to work out to where this is an actual feasible project, this is the bare minimums we can do. You're referring to using the back properties, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, using the southern property. Yes. Well, this is first reading. We get get another shot at it. So do we have a? Well, my take on this is that it would. I don't think it would be economically viable for anyone to do anything beyond what these folks are doing here with this challenging piece of ground, I think it's probably the best we can hope to get out of uh, something this challenged and in the location where it is, I think it's pretty close to a no-brainer that we ought to support it. I appreciate that. Thank you. So we went, what's the motion? Move to approve Ordinance 17-10, first reading of, an, of uh, to rezone parcels. Do I need to go through the whole thing? Yes. Please. All right. I'm sorry, Louise. Move to approve Ordinance 17-10 to rezone parcels 7980, 81, 97, 96, 96.01, tax map 151, and portions of partial 78, 95, and 95.01, tax map 151, located along Kingston Pike and South Watt Road. From... R1 and C1 to PCD. Second. Any more discussion? I have none. All none. In, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank and you. We'll, I'll be back the next one. <laughs> you haven't seen the last thing. Next item is approval of memorandum of understanding and license agreement between the town of Farragut and I as for advanced maps access. Mayor, we're actually on uh, ordinance uh, 6A2 this time, ordinance 17-11. Did I miss one? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, yeah. This one's good. Yeah, that's important. So that's number two. Okay. Ordinance 17-11, Ordinance to Amend Chapter 3, Section uh, 12F9A, to provide for new height regulations for buildings constructed in the mixed-use town center portion of the general commercial zoning district, Town of Farragut application, applicant. Okay, this item was discussed at the June Planning Commission meeting, and it was concerning the current requirement in our mixed-use town center portion of the general commercial zoning district um, that requires new buildings to be at least two stories or have the appearance as viewed from all four elevations of being two stories. Um, the uh, This came about uh, at initially by the uh, owner of the Silver Spoon property that um, obtained site plan approval for a project they called the Ferry Gateway back uh, in May of 2016. Since that time, they've been trying to uh, market that project um, and make the numbers work based on the plan that was approved. 
Um, and what the, the issue they express to us that they're, they're really having is that that particular piece of property, which is 2.2 acres, uh, is really too small to uh, accommodate the amount of parking that they would need based on the uses that they're catering to. They have two restaurants, which as you all know are big parking space demand generators. Um, and, uh, and then also provide for um, functional second floor space um, that, uh, you know, could help co uh, offset the cost of, of the project by providing more, more leasable space for the project. So uh, what they're faced with is, is a situation based because of the parcel size uh, of trying to build a building that looks two-story and incur that cost in development without having that leasable space of a functional two-story building. Uh, as you all know, when we added this provision in our mixed-use town center, we were hoping that uh, this second floor would be a functional leasable space, maybe even a place where it could be residential potentially uh, in the right location. Uh, but that's not what this particular uh, entity has found. Um, and after thinking about this a little bit more um, and hearing their concerns, uh, it appeared to the staff that this could be an issue in other smaller lots in the mixed-use town center area, like the Phillips 66 building uh, on the other side of Kingston Pike. So we posed the question to the Planning Commission as to whether that provision in our mixed-use town center area should be maybe revisited uh, uh, so that um, you may have a situation where the smaller <coughs> lots um, may not have to build a new building that's two-story or have the appearance of two-story. Um, and what I have uh, put together in, in Ordinance 1711 that was presented to the Planning Commission recently um, provides for some language to give um, some flexibility for lots of record that is already platted lots that are not part of a larger development that are less than three acres for the ability to come before the Planning Commission and request uh, the construction of a new building or buildings that are less than two stories. Uh, but in that ordinance, we've also included uh, some language that I think helps protect the overall intent of what we're trying to do with the built environment in the mixed-use town center. Uh, so there's some language in there, you know, about uh, making sure that um, the other elements uh, of the, uh, the mixed-use town center are you know, are compliant with our architectural design standards, like we would still want to see an iconic uh, element on these buildings. Uh, we still would want to have them at least 75% face brick on all four elevations, have a defined cap, uh, those kinds of things that uh, add that kind of unique and lasting visual character to this part of our town. So. Uh, when this was presented to the Planning Commission, I uh, went through this and uh, they uh, unanimously recommended approval of Ordinance 1711 on, uh, to the board. Um, and uh, I'll be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. I don't know if the applicant's here. I don't, I don't see them, or not the applicant, but yeah. the Silver Spoon property owner. But they're, they're aware of this and they certainly support this modification as as um, does the uh, the realtor that's marketing the Phillips 66 property because he's apparently running into the same issues I'm gonna go ahead and make a motion so we can do Robert's rules which we are so bad about <coughs> I'm gonna move to approve ordinance 17-11 ordinance to amend chapter 3 section 12 F 9 a to provide for new height regulations for buildings constructed in the mixed-use town center portion of the general commercial zoning district. And I'll second it. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It passes. Now we move to business items. Uh, first one is approval of appointments for the Farragut uh, Folklife <coughs> Museum Arts Council and the Parks and Athletics Council. 
Yes, sir. The purpose of this business item, as you stated, was to fill unexpired terms in those committees. The museum committee has two positions that need to be filled, and the others just have one. And one term on the museum commit, or I'm sorry, on the, yes, the museum committee expires in June 2018, and the other three will be June of 2019. So we have Barbara Murphy, who is um, currently a docent, Holly Nels and Jessica DeFranco have a practice applied for the museum committee. Jennifer Roush has applied for the arts council position and Christy Wright has applied for the parks and athletics council. So the decision you need to make tonight is which of the two Holly Nels or Jessica DeFranco would you like to appoint to the other one year position since Barbara Murphy is currently a docent. May I make a suggestion? Um, Holly Nels I believe is, is here. She's young. She's interested. We certainly need some young faces around town of Farragut. So I would suggest that uh, we put um, Holly, uh, uh, nominate Holly Nels for the second position. A second, yeah. All right, so we'll have Holly Nels for the Farragut Museum Committee expiring June of 2018. Barbara Murphy, her term expiring June of 2019. Jennifer Roush for the Arts Council June of 2019. And Christy Wright for the Parks expiring June of 2019. Question. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like Christy Wright lives in Harriman. Is there any issue with that? No, we, we've met all of our, all the, the two-thirds requirement for living in the town. Terrific. Okay. I think she works here in town. Uh, I think she's a realtor. She's a realtor. Yeah, I believe so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I think a librarian or a former librarian. Yeah, I think. yeah that's true. Yeah. So is that a motion? I'll make a motion. Go ahead. That we approve the uh, four as... Read by our town recorder. So can we say that one more time? Yes, we have Holly Nels for the museum committee, her position expiring June of 2018. Barbara Murphy for the museum committee expiring June of 2019. Jennifer Roush for the arts council expiring June of 2019. And Christy Wright for parks and athletics expiring June of 2019. I'll second. Any discussion? If none. none. So, uh, favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. The next one is uh, approval of memorandum of understanding uh, and license agreement between the town of Farragut and KGIS for advanced maps access. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for those who don't know, KGIS stands for Knoxville, Knox County. Knoxville Utilities Board Geographic Information Systems. So the town and KJS have enjoyed a good working, a strong working relationship since 1994. Uh, we're a licensee of their data, and we also share our data with them so they can publish it on their uh, system. So the data sharing license we have now permits the town to use KJS data and vice versa, but it's very restrictive on what we can and can't manipulate and distribute publicly. What it does not permit is the use of their detailed, up-to-date information and robust advanced maps program. You may recall back in January, um, we gave a demo to the board on the advanced, advanced maps program and talked about the benefits um, and the uh, elements of the license. At that time, the board consensus was to move forward with negotiating the expansion of the program. So the town and the KJS staff uh, continued to collaborate over the past several months, which resulted in the attached contract uh, license agreement. The agreement's been reviewed and approved as to form and content by the respective agency's attorneys. Uh, we had this go before the KGIS board. They meet quarterly. Um, so the KGIS board, which consists of the Knoxville mayor, Knox County mayor, and first utility uh, district executive director, they meet quarterly. And because of the ne necessity of the program and the time compression created by the responsibilities of both the town and KGIS, we decided to have the board, the KGIS board, formally review and consider the agreement at the May 19, 2017 meeting. I've attached the minutes of the meeting in the packet. Uh, they unanimously approved uh, the agreement, so we we're presenting you tonight for consideration, um, and we recommend approval of the agreement in the amount not to exceed $25,183.75, and then as an annual license fee for us. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about the program or the contract itself. You do use this a lot, don't you? Yes, sir. I use it every day. 
I use it every day. And actually, I'm the only one who has a license, so I'm sure once uh, once we get a license for everybody, then everybody's going to use it every day. Can we make a motion first? This requires a motion, right? I'm going to make a motion. Move to approve the MOU and license agreement between the town and KGIS for the annual amount of $25,183.75. Second. Does this require a um, password to get in? How, how do you access it? It's all web-based, so you'll have a, a username and password. I'll have a username and password? I'm hoping. <laughs> Because I would like one. And eventually we're, we're hoping Here. to get a public portal uh, through this system. So instead of going to KGIS, you can go to the Town of Farragut website. And we'll have a Town of Farragut portal okay. Okay. with our data and the KGIS data um, amalgamated into one layer, or multiple layers, actually. It's very helpful. I pull it up a lot of times in all of our meetings just to look at, the, like I was looking at the topo maps or zoning, or it's, it's just a really helpful um, thing, tool to have. And I can only imagine how the expanded options that are in comes with this agreement. So I have nothing more. I just have one question. Uh, total budget 61,204, requested 25,183.75, remaining 36,020. Are we expecting additional costs that I missed here? I'm not sure. This, I this is coming out of a line item that actually contains several different things in it. So the KGIS is coming out of the GIS line item which has our license for Esri, which is our main platform, and some other things. So um, the 25 is for this, and then the other funds are already dedicated. Okay. Thanks. Any more discussion? No further question here. None. This uh, contract, this is basically a renewal of the contract, the existing contract, and for the same amount? We, we have an MOU with them right now, so as far as the MOU and the data sharing, that's, that's going to stay the same. The only thing that's going to change is our, our we're going to become a full partner along with uh, First Utility and, and Knoxville and Knox County. So we'll have full access to, to their platform um, and all the functionality that goes with it. But as far as the, the MOU, basically going to stay the same. The license is what's going to change. Is it renewed on a certain time frame, or is it just an ongoing thing? Annual. Uh, the, the, it's an annual re okay. renewal, yes. Okay. Any more? I have no more questions. No. None. All in favor say aye. 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 Approval of agreement for services between the town of Farragut and the University of Tennessee for stormwater inventory and mapping. I'm, Mayor. Hold on a minute. Oh, oh. you're going to talk first. I'm just going to give a quick intro. That's good. Um, the town's stormwater infrastructure is getting to a point where major repair, repairs or replacement will be necessary to maintain the integrity of the system. Um, in order to methodically categorize and prioritize future maintenance needs, the town needs to conduct an inventory. Instead of simply farming this out to a, an engineering firm, uh, we decided to contact UT to see if they had any personnel, students, uh, departments that wanted to work with us on this project jointly so we could uh, have the benefit of doing the project professionally and have the things done that we want to have done, but also serve the university and the community to have, uh, you know, the local students um, and professionals that are down there, the professors and so forth, working with us on this project. So we approached UT and we're fortunate enough to uh, negotiate a, a scope of work with the uh, funding that we have allocated. Um, and uh, let's see. So per the attached contract, the town and UT, um, we negotiated the scope of work. Uh, we're we're going to be doing two of the several subdivisions that we're going to do in this inventory. We're going to be doing the two oldest subdivisions we have first, uh, Village Green and what was the other one, Lori? Kingsgate. Kingsgate. Yeah. Anyway, Lori Saul is our stormwater uh, manager. Um, she's kind of run a point on this, so I'll let her talk a little bit about the program itself and then any elements of the contract that uh, you guys have questions about. I'm short, so I have to move that. Um, yeah, actually, we're looking at um, the first phase of this project being um, the three oldest neighborhoods. So we're looking at Village Green, Foxton, and Kingsgate. Um, and we have several other neighborhoods identified for future phases as well. Um, and the intent here was to start with the oldest neighborhoods first, um, with the expectation that that infrastructure is the oldest and probably very possibly in the worst con condition. Uh, of course, that may not be true, but uh, it seemed a reasonable place to start. Um, 
So like, uh, you know, Gary was saying, we, we've worked with uh, UT to come up with a scope and uh, we have a contract um, that um, Tom Hale has agreed upon as well as the um, contract uh, staff at UT. And just, you know, looking at, at doing this project to meet two goals really, one is identifying um, various stormwater assets and assessing what their condition is, um, what kind of life they may have left in them. Uh, but it also helps meet part of our um, state uh, permit for stormwater um, in that we have, to, we have to have certain assets mapped and understand the direction of flow from an inlet to an outfall into the stream. So that it, this kind of has two components to it and helps us meet both of those goals. I'm going to move to approve the agreement with UT Water Resources Research Center for mapping and assessment of the town's stormwater infrastructure for a not to exceed amount of $50,000. I'll second it. The discussion. Yes, so this basically this $50,000 is supposed to cover Village Green Fox Den and Kingsgate, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And then we'll move. Do we have a already have a priority list list beyond that or have we identified that yet or I know you said that we have. Yes, I believe that we came up with the top 10, um, which generally are the 10 oldest um, neighborhoods. Um, so, you know, ideally that would be the direction we were planning to go once this initial phase was complete. And how long will this phase take? This phase they estimated to take, uh, I think the contract we have it, um, no more than seven months. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if we find uh, that we're having some issues, do we have we investigated at all how to resolve stormwater issues or how to repair them or have we done any of any research on that do we know i, I mean other than our standard practice on, on repairs okay. we haven't done Which any research on, on how we're going to go about implementing any repairs okay yeah. so i think until we get in there and see what's going on with the system we're really not going to know so we're not borrowing trouble in other words we're just we're wait and see okay I, this is long overdue. We, we really, um, I'm, I've been looking forward to us. I, I'm one of those nervous Nellies that thinks, oh my goodness, if we don't start looking at this, it's something we need to be aware of. So, and the board has identified this as a high priority yeah. the strategic plan. Yeah. So, yeah. I want to add that as well. Okay. I have nothing more. I have nothing. Yeah. Uh, all, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next item is, the dis is a discussion of firearms policy for the Farragut building located at 11408 Municipal Center Drive. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we, obviously the board knows we've had over the years different discussions on firearms at our different parks and buildings, things like that. Uh, recently, the state legislature enacted some new legislation that went into effect on July 1st. And uh, as a result of that, I know Alderman Markley had requested that we put this item on the agenda to discuss tonight. The town's policy for the town hall building has been, uh, as you can see when you dr walk into the building, that firearms are not are not uh, are there. Excuse me, firearms are prohibited from the building here at town hall. Um, Tom, uh, our town attorney Tom Hale will go into the legal uh, aspects of things with you here in just a moment and talk through those a little bit with you how the law reads. But the main things that we're needing from the board tonight are are a decision on how you would like to proceed forward with firearms being allowed or not allowed in the building. Um, we can certainly discuss the matter tonight, uh, take it under advisement, and come back and discuss it again at another future meeting if you want more public comment. Um, we can, you can vote to continue uh, to the, the, con the current policy that we have in place now, which is not to allow firearms in the building. Or you can ask staff to prepare a resolution for a future BMA meeting where we can come back and present one to you that would then allow for firearms to be in the building. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Tom and let him talk you through the legal aspects of kind of what the changes have been here in the last, uh, say, three months. Had, uh, all I think received a, a memo that I prepared. Uh, it's a fairly complicated set of statutes that we have in Tennessee that regulate when and where firearms can be can be carried. 
generally speaking, the statutes provide that that it's an offense under the criminal code to carry a firearm. But then there's an exception to that that provides a defense to anyone who is carrying a firearm with a properly issued permit from the state of Tennessee. And there's a fairly lengthy statute that regulates who is entitled to get a permit and under what, what circumstances. Um, so if that were all there were to it, then people with firearms, permitted firearms, the right to carry, could carry anywhere they wanted to carry. Well, that's not the way it works because there's a whole raft of statutes that regulate when and in what kind of spaces uh, people, even with permits, cannot carry firearms. Um, one of those is uh, that the uh, owners of buildings, whether they be government or private individuals, but if they have buildings open to the public, uh, they have the right to post that no firearms are allowed, and if they do it properly, then they have the right to eliminate people carrying firearms, even with permit with permits from entering their building. That is the statute that was recently amended. And what the amendment does is it basically says if you want to per if you want to prohibit people who are carrying permitted firearms from your building, then you must at each ex each 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 entrance to that building provide a metal detector, a, a security officer or police officer, and that police officer who is trained in how to um, inspect and check for firearms and use the metal detector, and that person must actually uh, check people for firearms. The, th the thought of that statute is obviously that if you're going to prohibit people from being in your building with firearms, even if they're permitted, then you've got to make sure that there's nobody in the building with a firearm. Uh, they, I, because a lot of people have argued that by posting buildings and prohibiting people with firearms, the people who are unlawfully carrying firearms are not probably going to pay any attention to your post. And so the idea is that people uh, who are sitting in the meeting who are law-abiding citizens and have left their guns outside might uh, encounter somebody who is unlawfully carrying a gun. So the idea is make sure that nobody can come into the building and that's okay then if you want to prohibit people from carrying guns in the in your building. So they made the cost of it pretty high because to put a metal detector and a man that metal detector with a security officer gets pretty expensive. So I was first asked to look at this to determine whether or not that we had to start posting uh, putting metal detectors at all the entrances to this building. And this was even before Alderman Markley asked that we think about this a little bit. There is an exception to the new amendment that says that if the building you're talking about is a building where judicial proceedings occur, regardless of whether the, ju the judicial proceedings are in session, you don't have to comply with the new amendment. So our conclusion was that the, we can continue on just like we are now with the post, but we don't have to comply with the new amendment because this is a building where judicial proceedings happen and uh, 
So that was an exception that allowed us to continue as we are. So, but then the question became, if we wanted to change the posting policy and not post this building, did we have the right to do that? And having considered all of this stuff, uh, it, was, it was my conclusion that we have the right to either post and follow the posting rules as they exist, or if we don't want to post, we could be like every other building owner in the world that doesn't post, and we could pass a resolution that would say uh, to take down the posts and not prohibit people with carry permits to come into the building. They couldn't come into the judicial session with a firearm, however, because there's another statute that says that you can't carry a firearm in any building where there are judicial proceedings going on. There are other statutes that don't allow you to carry firearms in school properties, and then you have all the regulations that we've talked about before about whether or not you can carry firearms in the public parks. So there's, there are other statutes that deal with the sensitive areas, they call them, and prohibit firearms in those sensitive areas. But in buildings in general, and in this building, uh, I think we have the right, if it's the will of this body, to either uh, post, as we are doing, and leave it as it is, and nothing should change for us based on this amendment, or we can make the decision that we're not going to post any longer. And in that event, then uh, the people who come into the building who have a carry permit can carry a, a firearm, except when we're having town court, and then they couldn't they couldn't come into town court, of course, with with the, uh, a firearm. So that's sort of the overlay of what is a fairly complicated um, statute, and it's. The analysis is designed to get at the questions that I was asked because the, you tweak the facts just the slightest little bit and it requires you to look at other parts of the, I mean, I think in this statute there's about 60 separate sections, all of which deal with a particular issue that the legislature has felt it important to address. So if you have any questions about all that, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I'd just like to say uh, once, uh, once again, thank you, Tom, for an ex excellent uh, exposition of the question and the matter at hand and the, uh, the legal aspects of it. Um, I would like to make a few comments, if I might, why, why this is important to me. Now, I think, first of all, it's, it's clear that the state legislature recognizes the incontrovertible uh, body of evidence that these postings are, are totally ineffective, that they, they have no, uh, no positive impact whatsoever on the safety and well-being of the people. Uh, criminals are always going to disregard them. Law-abiding citizens will obey them and will thus make, put themselves in a vulnerable situation. It has been... Uh, almost without exception, posted gun-free zones is where uh, mass shootings occur. It, it's a vulnerable situation that creates a soft target for people who intend to do harm. And, and it makes the people in those buildings vulnerable and, and gives them nothing, nothing in return to offset that, uh, that vulnerability. So I think the state, in recognizing this, the state legislature, it's, it's pretty clear that they uh, they recognize the futility of such prohibitions, and, and their intent is to uh, give uh, us the, uh, the opportunity to, to eliminate these, these soft targets that we create in our buildings. And uh, I know a lot of people don't like to think about the dangerous situation we live in, uh, but those of us, and there's 
quite a few of us out there. I, I think there's over half a million licensed carry permit uh, holders in the state of Tennessee that take very seriously our responsibility for our own safety and well-being and that of those around us and have gone to the effort to, uh, to obtain a, a license uh, permit to carry. And, uh, and they have been shown to be the most law-abiding segment of society. The uh, uh, carry permit holders have exponentially lower incidence of uh, criminal activity than the general public, and in fact have five times less likelihood of an unlawful shooting than, than the police department does. And I think uh, uh, Captain Lawson could, could attest to that. Um, Licensed permit holders are a, an essential bulwark to the, the freedom and safety of the people. And so my feeling is, and I, and I feel very strongly about this, that if you intend for me to surrender my innate, God-given, constitutionally protected, state-approved, and duly licensed ability to defend myself in the best way that I see uh, fit for myself, then you darn well better be prepared to provide for my defense in some other way. Uh, if you're going to disarm me when I walk in this building and, and not disarm anybody else who might want to come in here with criminal intent, uh, then you're basically violating my own uh, uh, safety. So I feel pretty strongly that it's, it's, to me it's offensive to walk up here and see that, that I'm expected to come in here, surrender my right to defend myself, yet nothing is done uh, for, for my protection or the protection of any of the citizens who come in here. So I feel strongly that it would be in the best interest of the town just to take those uh, decals off the doors. And I'd be really interested to hear anybody's thoughts on that or, or why, uh, why we should keep them, what benefit we see, and, uh, and any, uh, any evidence that anybody would like to present that, that could change my mind. I have a question, because I don't really disagree with your assessment, except for here's the wrinkle. <coughs> From what you've said, Tom, during judicial proceedings, um, you are banned from having a fire weapon, a firearm. Uh, how do we, if we take the posting off, how do we handle that? If we, I mean, if we taste, I don't know what we do at the, do, what do we do at the? We always have a bailiff here uh, that is a deputy uh, or a reserve officer for the sheriff's department. And uh, he is armed, and sometimes uh, if they need to, he can search uh, each person that comes in the room for the, uh, for the proceedings. But I don't know if that really happens, you know, every single time we have a, a proceeding. But uh, certainly he's armed and, and handles the meeting for the judge. Well, how do we post to, if we take the posting down, how do we handle the notification that no weapons are allowed during a judicial proceeding? Well, there's a lot of things that's in the law that people don't know about, I guess you could say. But I, I suppose an easy way to do it would be to have an announcement at the commencement, or we could actually post a temporary outside sign the room door. outside the door. Yeah. As, and one thing I need to look at is I think that it's only – I'd need to look at the statute to, to decide – whether the the when judicial proceedings go on, if that section of the code requires that the entire building that you not be in the same building where it's going on, I know that's the way this exception reads in the thing, but I would suggest that you could always have a temporary post that was put out at the appropriate location on the days, I think it's once a month, if I'm not mistaken, when we have judicial proceedings. I mean, that could be dealt with in that manner. I feel comfortable with the fact that Captain Lawson is usually here at most of our meetings. If he can't be here, is it possible to request another deputy be here in his place? And yes. Not a problem? Feel comfortable, but I'll tell you, the MPC meetings is when it gets heated, and, and that's it doesn't yep. tend to get ugly here. But and uh, and we don't have a deputy here mm -mm. for that, right? No. 
This uh, is billed as discussion. Does that mean that we don't vote, uh, vote on anything? Mayor, it's really up to the board. I think, uh, as I've laid out before before you earlier, uh, you really have a two or three different options. You can go ahead and vote uh, to keep the policy the way it is now. You can vote to take you know further discussion on this at future meetings, or you can uh, ask staff to prepare a resolution at a future meeting to come back that would change the policy uh, to effectively take off the firearms postings that we have currently on town hall building. I, I, and I'm not hung up on how we go about this. I think that, that there is a, a basis during court proceedings that you shouldn't have firearms there, and it should be a clearly understood policy, and you should have someone there to enforce it. And I think that's probably a good thing. And I wouldn't even be averse to having the sticker on the door if it said lawful permit holders accepted or something like that, uh, just to recognize that the... Uh, uh, the right of lawfully uh, licensed people to, to carry in the building. Um, I would prefer that we just had nothing up there, but uh, I would be amenable to something like that. And I don't expect us to make a decision tonight. I, I would like to uh, make a motion that we do prepare a, uh, a resolution, have staff prepare a resolution, look into this a little further, and then have, a, uh, have some more discussion on it, because it is a rather, uh, a rather complex, and it's an emotional issue for a lot of people. So. I uh, I'd like to make that motion. Uh, I'm going to say something first, okay? Sure. That'd be okay. Regardless of what we do, uh, whether we decide to, to take it off, leave it on, uh, Alderman Pablo made a point uh, with the uh, Planning Commission. We have other committees that sit here besides us. Uh, we also have a, uh, a lady that answers the phone up there in the front, and we have Mark and his staff upstairs. And uh, I think if we, whichever way we go, I think we need to look at putting ballistic plates in. And what I mean by that is plates in the front and plates across the top, plates where she's at, and upstairs. I would suggest a minimum of a level three, which will uh, deter a handgun round. Um, Armor Core, uh, which is Waco Composites, uh, there's many others that make these, but uh, they're one of the ones that uh, that uh, specialize in the woven polyethylene fiberglass uh, units. And uh, these are, uh, I've got the cost and, and the, uh, the weight of them. Uh, the level three was, is a handgun. A level seven would be a high-powered rifle, such as a AR or uh, something of that nature. Uh, there may be certain people that do have carry permits in meetings, but there may be meetings where there is not a person that has a carry permit. And if you did have a ballistic plate in these areas, at least you would have some amount of shelter uh, from somebody with a, that uh, got overzealous and decided they wanted to shoot. That's, uh, that's what I've got to say. I have one other question for Captain Lawson. Uh, the meeting of concern is the planning commission meeting, which meets once a month. Could a deputy be in attendance at that meeting as well, once a month, for the planning commission meeting? Third Thursday of every month. It'd be three three Thursdays Seven. out of each month. Two for the board of mayor and alderman, one for the planning commission. I, I just throw that out as a. Another option. Yeah, this is discussion, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what about the Board of Zoning Appeals? <laughs> is that really... Uh, Those people are not uh, happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes that one... Uh, we don't have that particular board very often, but uh, uh, we've had some very angry people after those <coughs> meetings, yeah. But... Uh, we're not, I, would, I would much rather have the ability to fight back than to have something to duck behind. I mean, something to duck behind is good. I think that that'd be a good fallback position, but that's just you, though. There's other people. I mean, I'm talking about Rita Holiday and, and uh, Ed Whiting and, and others that would. Uh, they don't have carry permits? No. <laughs> oh. Maybe we ought to work on Has that. Has one. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. 
I'll talk to Rita about that. Well, I think I'd like to see things stay as is until we have further discussion or some other meeting where we... Yeah, well, I think that's what uh, one of David's options was, that the staff prepare a resolution that kind of lays out all the all the concerns and issues, and we look at this whole thing, look at the big picture of it. Well, I think uh, what, what would be helpful is, I know, Alderman Markley, you mentioned earlier, uh, you'd be okay with, you know, posting something different on the on the on the wall on the uh, door possibly. I think I need to go back and probably Tom and I get together and figure out if there's certain language that that has to be up there or doesn't have to be up there because I know that posting that we have has to come out straight out of TCA. But right. but if we want to relax that some way, how do we do that? So that's uh, that's the first thing we need to do a little bit of research on before we get too far down the road for a resolution. Because I know when I bring a resolution to you, what I'd like to be able to do is have all the parameters of the resolution that you'd like to see in there so that you can adopt it and that be the policy going forward. So it, what we're asking for is more discussion. Right, Bob? I think so, yeah. I think the, the your alternative language would be basically that the that and you prefer that this not be the way it is as I understood what you said but if there were to be a post that the post accepted it, it handguns prohibited by unlawful handguns handguns are not permitted lawful carriers accepted yeah that pursuant that, to TCA the, that, the section, latest bill that basically just... says if you're if you're not lawfully carrying a gun, you shouldn't have a gun. Period. Whether it's in this building or wherever it is, and there very likely may be a but bunch of license permit holders in here prepared to. I, I follow what your suggestion is. Could also ask the board if if you'd be okay with this. I, I, this is one subject that actually staff kind of comes up and talks to you about once in a while. They ask, you know, well, hey, what's going on with this? I heard this happening, things like that. If the board's comfortable, I'd like to survey the staff, especially the ones that work here in town hall, to find out their comfort level of if they have an issue one way or the other uh, with taking down the post, or if they'd like to to uh, keep it up. If uh, if that helps the conversation a little bit for everyone, I'd be interested. They yeah. Could you also include the uh, ballistic question, ballistic plate sure. question? Sure. Any more discussion? I have none. No. I have none. And this. We got. We got. A, no. We. Uh, John Nils, two twenty one Smith Road. I want to remark. I thought that was beautiful. Uh, what you said, I agree with you one hundred percent on the way you said that. I thought that was great. And uh, Alderman Poblin is correct also that. Uh, there are some issues, not just with the Planning Commission, but other. And so, uh, David, you know, one thing that, if somebody out there wants to suggest it, uh, what might be involved in, like, uh, contracting with the Knox County Sheriff's Office so whenever we have a public committee meeting or something like hits here that we have a deputy? Because I know they hire out all the time. I, they might uh, give some good deal to the town of Fairgate, but it might be something worth uh, looking into. Yeah, and a lot cheaper than putting in metal detectors and a yeah. standing guard at the door and things like that. that that's all. Thank you. Well, that would that would uh, require uh, that's good input. That would require that we would leave the decals on. That what? That would require that we we would leave the decals on. Then. No. Well, according to what Tom said, as far as uh, if you had a guard. Is that right? No, no. I think okay. I think I'm uh, sorry. Please explain. Okay, if if you can have, the, all it's saying is, if you're gonna post, and prohibit people from carrying, then you do have to have, but if you do have to have, the metal detectors, the guard, and you have to do the inspection, of people as they come in to ensure nobody has a firearm, except. There's in this exception now for buildings in which judicial proceedings are going on under this other section of the code. And so we don't, it, it really, the, the amendment that we've been talking about really only applies to buildings where you post. If you don't post, then it's up to you 
to you can do whatever else you want to with your own security like you could put the ballistic plates you could put, have you could have two guards uh, even or if you, even if you don't post you could go ahead and have a metal detector at the at the door sure and and do and do uh, people that come in have to be inspected you could do that if you want to but it only is required if you post so if you don't post Thanks. and have a guard you're fine Thanks. Any more on that? I have nothing more. Uh, before we retire, do one more. We've got one more. The approval of. Took that off, didn't we? No, that's what we had. Yeah, yeah, approval of memorandum. Um, all right. <coughs> okay, well, let's see. That's approval of, of memorandum of understanding between the town of Farragut and the Farragut Business Alliance. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the FBA was formed back in 2009, and they're a nonprofit 501c6 organization. As the board is well aware, uh, they, they do a lot of different events in town. They do a lot to promote the businesses in our community, and they're the, the general nonprofit that helps us with, uh, with the Shop Farragut program and promoting everyone to shop here in our community. Um, last year, the board approved a one-year agreement with the FBA uh, that was it uh, just expired. And so the current MOU before you uh, outlines some of the economic development initiatives that they will be responsible for in the next year. Um, they also include their program of work, uh, which in includes retaining existing businesses and recruiting new business to the town. Uh, the, the main thing that, uh, that you can see in here also is that it still gives the town flexibility to terminate this contract in case you feel like uh, at any reason whatsoever the FBA is not re uh, maintaining and reaching the goals that you have set out for them. Uh, this year they're requesting $70,000 from the town, which is the same level of funding that they uh, had received this past year. Uh, and this is in our budget uh, for, the, for the current year as well. And so the Economic Development Committee took this up back in June and recommended approval of the MOU with the FBA. And so staff recommends approval as well. I'll move for approval of memorandum of understanding between the Town of Farragut and the Farragut Business Alliance. Second. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, now, before we uh, leave, let me say this. It's become uh, very obvious that we have a huge elephant in the room uh, or in the town. <laughs> and that elephant is speeding. We have got to get some something done about the speeders in this town. It, we're going to kill people if we don't start doing something about it. So put on your thinking caps. What can we do? Well, Mayor, I think I'm sorry. The first thing I the first thing I propose is that we have a public meeting, a community conversation to get the community involved. Because whatever we do, if we don't have community buy-in for it, then then it's pointless to do anything. So uh, there's a lot of people out there on next door that are extremely upset about speeding in their particular neighborhoods. Um, they're making efforts to get to work through the traffic calming policy. We may want to take a look at that for the neighborhoods um, and uh, dial in on, I know a few neighborhoods have requested it and their 85 percentile is just below what is required are we have we we put that too high that bar too high um we we restrict it from any kind of collector so local collectors don't don't even have that option there's there's a, we, there we really do need to bring the community in and have a discussion with the community i believe well yeah everybody has a story well, yeah, well, it's got to be solution oriented. Where do we want to go from here? Yes, everybody, we can we can have a complaining session or we can move. It's going to take enforcement, encouragement, education, and quite frankly, engineering. So it's. And we're going to need to give some people some tickets. And I cheer here. I cheer that on. I don't know if that helps, though. They just keep going. 
Well, I think you got to be relentless about it. It's going to have to be an ongoing thing. It can't. We, um, whatever we decide to do, we're just going to have to be um, stick with it and and decide that that's how we're going to handle things. Well, let's get going on it. A workshop is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Now let's get through the strategic plan that. first. <laughs> yeah. We'd like to have happy people, not <laughs> so we can figure out where we're going, and then let's do get, take care of this. Are we adjourned? Yep. Thank you. Uh, Tom, got anything? Oh, we need to have a no. I'm teasing. <laughs> I'll let the town administrator. Town administrator. <laughs> I don't need anything. You didn't ask the town administrator. I talked enough tonight. I don't need to say anything else. Yeah, I'm not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be quiet over here in the corner.